With the first pick in the 2014 NBA Draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Andrew Wiggins, Jabari Parker, Joel Embiid, Aaron Gordon, Dante Exum, Marcus Smart, Julius Randall, Alfred Payton, Zach Levine, Doug McDermott. Yeah, McDermott's already on the move for picks number 16 and 19. The two things you only dreamed would come together. The new quesarito from Taco Bell. No other second round picks ever won an MVP. Greatest passing big man maybe ever can shoot the lights out of the most. The 2014 NBA draft worked out exactly how the Denver Nuggets wanted, as with a huge trade. We have a trade to announce. The Nuggets were about to swindle the NBA and build around Gary Harris, a young athletic defensive guard from Michigan State, and an international big man they thought had all-star potential. Yusuf Nurkic. By the time this night was over, the Nuggets were sure they had drafted the future of their franchise, and they were right. As 22 picks later, taken at pick number 41, Nikola Jokic was a complete afterthought. But less than 10 years later, the man is a two-time MVP, he's redefined the center position, and he has also become one of the most dominant big men the NBA has ever seen. Which of course raises many questions. Why were so many players taken ahead of Jokic in the 2014 draft? What happened to the players taken before Nikola? And of course, why were scouts overlooking him to such an extreme degree? So what's up guys, Mike here, and with the 40 names on this list, we are really going to be focusing on key names here instead of going through everyone, as trust me, the key names have some very interesting stories. As remember, the first pick of this draft was never staying in Cleveland, so after taking Andrew Wiggins, the Cavs would make a big Big time trade. I got news for you. Love, Kyrie, and LeBron, mm. Cleveland going to the final. No matter what, the Cavaliers were going to trade for Kevin Love because that's what LeBron wanted in order to come back to Cleveland. These were heavy Le GM times. With this number one pick though, Minnesota thought they might have a generational prospect. That's what Andrew Wiggins was considered. At just the age of 14, Wiggins shattered a backboard for the first time. And from there, he was such a high school legend that he was nicknamed, due to the fact that he lived in Canada, Maple Jordan. He was the number one recruit in the nation according to ESPN. He was Gator national player of the year and he had one of the best mixtapes we have ever seen and this is back when mixtapes meant something shout out awesome rivers <laughs> concern about Andrew Wiggins going into the draft was that he was too passive. And after he was drafted, people also questioned if he worked hard enough, which is something Jimmy Butler says that Wiggins does do. It does seem that Wiggins is too passive to become a true NBA superstar though. In his third season playing for a really bad Minnesota Timberwolves team, Wiggins put up 23.6 points, four rebounds, a 2.3 assists per game, which were promising numbers for a third year player. But before we continue guys, I am very excited to say we are giving away a VIP experience to game four of the NBA finals. Roll the clip. To celebrate the launch of Coors Light, we are giving away a VIP experience to game four of the NBA finals. Plane tickets, a room, incredible seats it is all included for game four of the nba finals for one lucky person who is subscribed to cores Light. the winner will be picked on june 1st all you have to do to enter is subscribe and turn on post notifications for cores Light. good luck i cannot wait to pick the winner this is going to be incredible but it does seem that andrew wiggins does not want to be a true number one superstar it seems he is very content being the wingman type all-star to a true star in a guy like steph curry in his prime now these last three seasons andrew has averaged 17 17.7 points, 4.7 rebounds, and 2.3 assists per game. So really, if we were redrafting here, if there's any team that missed out, it is the Minnesota Timberwolves. As Nikola Jokic has proven that he has no problem completely building up a smaller market in Denver, so Minnesota could have had the same effect. And really, what was Nikola's story here? Why was he not drafted in even the first round? Well, to be honest, we have a two-parter. We have a prospect who internationally did not exactly look like he was going 
going to be a superstar until perhaps right at the end of the draft process. As between the ages of 17 and 18, Jokic did show tremendous growth in the Serbian league. However, while an 18 year old averaging 10.9 points and six rebounds per game is certainly very impressive in a league full of grown men, those numbers are a far cry from the numbers being put up right now by Victor Wembanyama, who in France's top league is averaging 21.6 points and 10.4 rebounds per game. So right there, you can see the stats that a generational number one prospect is putting up internationally compared to Jokic at the time. And with a player like number two pick Jabari Parker, who is a high school superstar in Chicago, who won state titles at the same high school that Derrick Rose and Ben Wilson played at, who then went on to be a tremendous player at Duke. It's not hard to see why scouts would bet on Jabari, who was also six foot 10 and also at his peak, averaged 20.1 points per game and 6.2 rebounds per game for the Bucks with Giannis before Jabari suffered his second ACL tear in the same knee during the 2017 season. And then his career was never close to the same. But if that did not happen, this could have been a very solid number two pick, but instead due to the injuries, it was not. As for Nikola Jokic's draft prospects, in the year headed up to the draft for Nikola at the Nike Hoop Summit against several future NBA players. In official competition, Nikola was hit or miss. On a court of high school stars playing for the World Select team against Team USA, Jokic struggled. He shot one for three and had five points and seven rebounds. As the best big man on the court was not Carl Anthony Towns either, it was Team USA's Jaleel Okafor, a true bust. However, in a 28 minute private scrimmage that somehow was written about, scouts were able to see the future MVP Jokic on display. Yes, this was MVP potential, as in a 28 minute scrimmage for the World Select team practice, Jokic dominated future number one pick Carl Anthony Towns, as weirdly enough, sharing the court with Jamal Murray, his future star teammate, Jokic would score 20 points and grab nine rebounds to catch 13 points and two rebounds in a 41 to 35 point win, which meant Nikola Jokic scored almost half the points for his team against 2015 number one pick Carl Anthony Towns, 2015 number seven pick Emmanuel Moutier, and 2015 number 12 pick Trey Lyles. But clearly he did not receive enough credit for this performance. Jokic's pre-draft interview did reveal that he started playing basketball a bit later than some. When did you start first start playing basketball? Uh, for real, for real, I started last, like, last year. This interview also had other gems. How do you feel like you're playing so far? You know, shot, I'm shot, shoot, I play low post, I do everything. Did you ever think about playing college basketball? He's so fast, everybody jumps so high, I don't jump, I just play basketball, like, you know, one on one, two on two. Do you want to play in the NBA? I don't think so much about that. Jokic was not as hyped of a prospect, certainly, as Joel Embiid, who is the only player with a legitimate case to go number one in a redraft. As in the original real 2014 draft, Joel Embiid was taken third despite being the number one overall prospect due to some pretty real injury concerns. Now, Joel was actually discovered amazingly through two basketball camps in Africa. Before that, he had been training to play professional volleyball and his dad was against him changing sports to basketball, but luckily his uncle talked his dad into the promise of his son being a future MVP. Embiid's journey to the NBA is pretty amazing though, as it still took Luke Mbamute inviting Joel to his personal basketball camp, where Joel played well and then got an invitation to the NBA's Basketball Without Borders camp, where he played even better, got an invitation to an American high school, and then became a top recruit for Kansas. If he doesn't play well at that one camp, he's a star volleyball player somewhere. But it was at Kansas where Joel and B did become a national name. Headed into the season, all anyone could talk about was Maple Jordan and Drew Wiggins. Until Embiid began practicing, Rick Patino famously went to a practice and said, that man, Joel Embiid, is the number one pick. And Joel probably would have been the number one pick. He probably still should have. However, he did suffer a stress fracture in his back, which as a seven foot two big man, you could see why that would give teams pause, especially because he also did miss his entire first technical real season in the NBA with injury. But as we know, this pick did end up working out incredibly well, as Joel has been the centerpiece the process has been built around and the anchor throughout this storm in Philly. He has proven if he has the right team around him, you can certainly build a title contender. And if he had gone to the Bucks and teamed with Giannis here at pick number two, well, that could have led to an international dynasty. Instead though, our next intriguing pick comes right away, as look at that, we have Jokic's teammate Aaron Gordon at pick number four. As a player, Aaron 
Aaron Gordon has proven what resilience can get you. As he went from hyped up star to complete bust to now near all star again as a top tier do it all guy for the Denver Nuggets after a rough go with the Orlando Magic. Gordon has rebounded nicely playing with Jokic. As a prospect, Aaron was everything you would expect from the greatest slam dunk contest runner up of all time. He was absurdly athletic, was the number four recruit on ESPN's big board, and also won the McDonald's All American game MVP with some filthy highlights. It is not hard to see why scouts were very excited with Aaron Gordon's potential. And with the motor that he is showing right now on the court, you can see why he was a great prospect. Aaron Gordon has never quite expanded his game enough to make him a superstar. But in terms of this draft, it was the Magic who I think failed him. Aaron Gordon is a great player on a winning team. The Magic never had close to a winning team. They just had a lot of dysfunction. Looking at pick number five, Marcus Smart was taken right after Aaron Gordon. And this is a case where you could have seen Zach Levine or Julius Randle taken, yes, but I don't think the Celtics fully regret taking Marcus Smart. However, it does have to be mentioned that Zach Levine was the main centerpiece in the trade for Jimmy Butler, and the Celtics certainly, certainly would have benefited if they could have gotten Jimmy Butler. Marcus Smart, though, was a top-tier prospect. He was not only seen as a star defensive guard who needed to work on his offense, but he was a very, very passionate player. The man certainly demonstrated his future loyalty. After his freshman season at Oklahoma state he was seen as a potential top three pick however he came back in order to win which they didn't they lost in the first round but he came back he also showed his passion in the way of fighting with a fan on the court physically a bit corner the other way Crockett fouled on the way up and a technical foul he's lost his composure a few times this season and it's hurt his team. Marcus Smart said racist words were involved. The fan, of course, denied this, you know. This was a thing though. There was certainly controversy headed into the draft about Marcus Smart. People were afraid he'd shove people. However, again, Marcus Smart, top tier prospect. His college stats were great. 18 points, 5.9 boards, 4.8 assists, and 2.9 steals a game. And with Boston, he has been a key piece to their title contender for years at this point. So I do not think that they regret at all drafting him unless, again, they could have gotten Jimmy Butler, but that is doing a lot of hypothetical trading. Now, Nikola Jokic in Boston possibly would have been the best thing for Nikola Jokic, as if he were able to team up with Jason Tano, the two's games together would pair very well and I also think their personalities would fit very well. I believe Jason Tatum really would appreciate having a teammate who has a quiet type of dog in him, as opposed to a more in your face type of guy. Looking at pick number seven here, Julius Randle is one of the steals in the draft in a redraft sense, but the Lakers did not get the value of him because they did not keep him. Instead, in Los Angeles, Julius Randle broke his leg during his rookie season and then never really got going in his career until he became the NBA's 2021 most improved player with the Knicks. He has also been a two-time All-Star and two-time All-NBA selection, but as a high schooler and as a prospect, his most notable storyline came in the form of Kentucky Super Class. And I say Kentucky Super class but also kentucky super at least when it comes to nba prospects super busts because this seems a bit ridiculous looking back as these names have aged a bit horribly however as we can see from this headline julius randall was the top player on a kentucky recruiting class that at the time was hyped up as the best class in 20 years since michigan's famous fab five class the fab five have documentaries created about them the names Julius Randle, along with James Young, Marcus Lee, Dakari Johnson, and Andrew and Aaron Harrison do not exactly hit the same as the Fab Five led by Jalen Rose and Chris Webber. But to his credit, Julius Randle helped Kentucky to a shocking run during his time there as the eight-seeded Wildcats took down a 35-0 Wichita State team in the second round and eventually lost in the national championship. If there is one thing that has been consistent, it has been that Julius Randle has had quite an interesting basketball journey so far. And I will also say, I'm sure at this point, Knicks fans would give anything to lose in the finals. Also, in this run, Julius had several huge plays down the stretch, including this incredible pass against Louisville in the second round that we just need to watch. Out to Randall, driving on Blackshirt. Feeds the corner. Aaron Harrison hits the three. 
Again, though, for the Lakers, this was not a great pick as Randall ended up just leaving them after LeBron signed with the team. As after Julius Randall, the fall off in talent until pick number 13 in Zach Levine is tremendous. Just outside of the top 10, TJ Warren was also an incredibly great pick at pick number 14. But I want to talk about Dougie McBuckets because at Creighton, Doug McDermott really was a scoring superstar. Was he a tier below Adam Morrison and Jimmer Fredette? You can make an argument he was in the same tier. I'll go one tier below, but the Bulls were willing to bet two first round picks on a player who led the nation in scoring as a senior and finished with over 3,000 points. I also just realized Steph Curry in that first tier. McDermott, I'm going tier two. It is definitely funny still that the Nuggets in return were willing to bet that the two picks that they got back, Gary Harris and Yusef Nurkic, were the answer to their problems. They were getting A's on every single draft grade website at the time, but it was instead all the way down to pick number 41. Nikola Jokic, who ended up proving everyone wrong, including the Denver Nuggets. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you don't miss the next one. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think, and again, have an awesome day.